This is today's things the Bible doesn't say. As long as I follow my spirit, I'll be fine. Now, how many have heard? Now, I'm not saying this is the exact phrase you heard, but how many have heard this spirit, this, this saying? So I want to ask you this question. How do you know which spirit you're following? Now, there's tons of scriptures in the Bible that says your spirit will bear witness and all that. But how many know anything that doesn't line up with the rest of the scriptures and take it out of context is not Bible? And so I'm going to give you a secret to all of these things right now. The Bible never contradicts itself. He'll never tell you one thing in one area then tell you something else. And everything he does in the Bible, he establishes it by two or three. So it has to be found in two or three areas to be biblical. Okay? So, it doesn't matter what your Sunday school teachers told you. If it didn't line up with the Word of God, what are you going to do with it? Chuck it out the window. If Grandma said it, it doesn't matter. Grandma meant well. Grandma did. Do you know almost 99% of our sayings actually came from the Word of God? That people passed down from generation to generation. People used to study the Word. But how many know okay, the enemy doesn't really care if they get passed down? He just wants to pervert them a little bit so they don't work. Y'all still with me? So the question I'm asking you, if you're going to follow your spirit, well, I, I feel in my spirit, Pastor. You know how many times I've heard that? Well, I feel in my spirit. And I feel that the Word of God, and I can look in the Word of God, and what you're saying in your spirit doesn't line up with the Word of God. So uh, your spirit would never be contrary to the Word of God. Just because you don't want to hear what the Word of God has to say on that subject, because it'll change your spirit's mind, doesn't make your spirit right. Do you see that? So which spirit? So. Then it ought to kind of it ought to kind of shake you up a little bit this morning, posing the question. Then, okay, then which spirit am I listening to? Because not every spirit that's whispering in your ear is from God. And if it's contrary to the Word of God, you definitely know it's not. No matter how good it feels. Come on, when he tempted Jesus, the Son of the living God, he tempted him with things that were kind of true, but each one of them, Jesus said, no, no, no. I'm not going to get into all that this morning. So, don't be led astray by feeling led by the wrong spirit. And in case you don't know what that picture is, and you're not from the Ozarks, <laughs> That's a chunk of lead. L-E-A-D. And they're feeling lead. But the enemy can pervert scriptures even. He's come to what? Lead you astray. Is he going to come at you usually straight on with something that's so obvious that you're going to know no. yeah. that it's not true? He's going to twist it up enough and especially, we have familiar spirits also. Wrong spirit. What spirit are you listening to? That follow you around. They see all the emotions you're dealing with, all the stuff. And they will get in your ear and listen if you're not careful. Especially if you get a wrong heart and start opening the doorway up. Amen. Now, can the devil force you to do anything? No. no. God went down and whipped Satan. Got the keys of death, hell in the grave. He's victorious over him forevermore. Great news, right? So Satan has no authority over you. He just, the only thing he has is called deceit. That's why the Bible says many will be deceived. So he will try to deceive you and open the door up. Then he'll get one of those wrong spirits in there to try to lead you astray. But if somebody comes along and they, you're dealing with something, you only tell them half of it, you go, well, I'm feeling led this way. If their next word out of your mouth is, well, what's the Bible say? You need to find somebody else to talk to. If they go, I'm feeling that led way with, with you too. Without any scriptural references, you're in deep doo-doo. 
Do you follow what I'm saying? Now, I'll be the first one to raise my hand that there has been a time in my life when I've been led by the wrong spirit a long time ago. And I recognized it and I shut that door. And I learned to really start doing these things I'm talking about. And lots of spirit-filled folk will, will always talk about being led by God. But how many know you need to start asking your spirit yourself, which spirit's leading me? How do I know? Does it line up with the Word of God? Now, if I, you raise your hand in here, most of you would say you've heard this saying before. <coughs> you probably even said it or you've had people say it to you. Probably both. And if you get the hackles up when someone asks you for the verses to found what you're feeling led to, how many know that's already a sign you've been misled? Y'all no. yeah. still with me? But how many times do people, what we're, what we're talking about is things the Bible didn't say. The Bible didn't say as long as you feel led, it'll be okay. That's not what it said, is it? Does it, we're going to look at the verses. Don't get me wrong. I've got all the scripture here. I'll be thinking I'd bring you something without the word of God. Come on. But the Spirit does talk about, the Bible does talk about the Spirit leading you and guiding you. But each time it talks about coming back to the Spirit of truth. Yeah. Well, the Spirit of truth lives in you. Yes, Jesus lives in you. But Jesus, I'm getting way ahead of my message today. But uh, Jesus was the Word and is the Word and the Word of God is also made flesh among us. So we we also know that the Spirit of Truth is the Word of God. So nothing that the Spirit Holy Ghost is going to say would contradict its own self and the Spirit of Truth. Right? Right. So however when He oh look at that Spirit of Truth we're just talking about that, fellow. Mm -hmm. Comes, he will guide you into all truth. Now, if you question anybody about with them feeling led and they need a piece of chunk of lead in their hand, L E A D, this is the verse they throw at you every time. The Spirit leads me, I don't need that. Well, the Spirit of what? Spirit truth. truth. What is the what is the spirit of truth? It's the word of God. So anything the Spirit of Truth leads you should come up with at least three things to back it up because if it takes three things to make it God, it needs three things of validation for it to be from God. Still with me? So He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak for Himself. Wait a minute. He's not just giving me a new revelation as the Holy Ghost uh, power tripping guy, you know, the more now, I really when I saw my spirit, I said I'll say it out loud. You know, there's people that I love the glory of God. I pray we get some this morning. We can all do with a good dose of it. But he's not bringing some fresh thing that's just so far out there that has not ever been revealed in the Word of God. You see what I'm saying? Because he's not speaking for himself. But as, but as for many things he, he may hear, he will speak. Where is he hearing these things? At, at the Father. And the Father's the one that wrote the Word of God, spoke through Jesus. Jesus didn't do His will. He did the Father's will. So how do we know what the Father's will? He says, it is written. Isn't that how Jesus Himself answered Satan yes. every time in the Word of God? He didn't say, I'm feeling led. To tell you to jump off the roof today, Satan. I mean, you know, we'd like to say that. Not today, Satan. Jump off the roof, buddy. And he goes, I'm glad you feel that way, but that doesn't work on me. I'm only bound by the Word of God. Y'all still with me? So, and he will report to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will receive from me and he will report to you. So, now we see three people involved for that spirit to guide you. Can you not see three people involved right here? Y'all seeing this? Well, I don't need that. I have the spirit. He guides me. Well, 
He's connected to the other three, so you better be consulting them too. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. And where is he hearing it at? From the Father, from Jesus, from the Word of God. That shall he speak. He's not making up new stuff. <laughs> Come on. I've got a fresh revelation. No, you have a new one. Yes, you, you, you have a new, a fresh revelation. The Holy Spirit doesn't have one. He's revealing something to you that's already in the Word of God. You just have not seen it yet. But if it comes contrary to any other word of God, then I'm going to question in what spirit's leading you. Do you see where we're going with this? Now, do I think you should be spirit led? Absolutely. But there's a reason why he says study to show yourself approved. He said in the end days many will be deceived. Why? Because they didn't study to show themselves approved. And they'll be led astray, the Bible says, contrary to every, with every doctrine, just kind of blown through the wind. Because they felt led. I wish I had a chunk of lead this morning. Are you hearing me? You're hearing the severity of it. Do you see what I'm saying? So, just to say, I feel that, well, I'm feeling God led me this way. Okay, do you know anytime that God gives me something to preach? Do you know what the very sometimes he does speak to me just like audibly, you know, just like on this topic. Say, say this topic here. We'll take this one. Do you know what the very next words are out of my mouth to me, to, to, the, to the God that made heaven and earth? I need some scripture for that. Not, okay, I'm going to go give this fresh revelation. No, it's I need some scripture from that. And if I don't have all the scripture for that, I'm not bringing it to you. No matter how much I feel like it's from God. If I make any decisions in my life, I'll pray. I'll let the Spirit of God guide me. But whenever He guides me, guess what I say to Him? I need some Scripture for that. Do you see what I'm saying? And He will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. He's going to, so He's going to make Jesus look good and not be contrary to to things Jesus said. Did we see that? For he shall receive mine and shall show it unto you. So he's receiving Jesus' word. Where can we find Jesus' words? Well, the whole Bible is the word. Jesus was the word. So we can always find him that he is he is expounding upon the word of God. John 15, 25 through 27. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause, but when the Comforter has come. Who is the Comforter? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I'm led by the Spirit. Whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth. So the Spirit of truth is Jesus, and the Spirit of truth is also the Holy Spirit. Are they going to contradict them? And what is the word of truth? The Bible, God's written word. Y'all still with me? Which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So, if the Spirit's speaking, it's speaking the Word of God. We can see it right here. See it? Everybody see that? Yes. Got it? Are you sure? Some of you look confused. Yeah. Do you see it? The Spirit's speaking. Spirit. He's speaking the Word of God, right? And he shall also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. So he's also, but you're going to recognize that Jesus as God is in the room whenever he's speaking because they're going to, they're going to bear witness of one another. They're going to all be tied in together. And they don't contradict each other. John chapter 14, verse 23 through 26. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. The question is, is if I love God. Because if I love God, then I'm going to do my best 
to keep his commandments. Am I going to be perfect at all the time? No, but I'm going to recognize when I miss the mark and I'm going to sharpen my hand. Okay? So, if a, if a man loved me, it says he'll keep my words on Sunday morning. If he loves me, he'll keep his words when he thinks about it. No, it says, And my Father will love him, and he will come unto me and make our abode with him. So now we're talking about them setting up. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings and the word. So, what do we have to keep? The word of God. So, if you're being led by a spirit that's contrary to the word of God, it's leading you astray. Can we see that? I don't care how much it sounds like it, looks like it, even you want it to be, it's leading you astray. Which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Even Jesus said, listen, did Jesus speak for himself or speak for his Father? To speak for his father. And but he is the word and was the word. They're all three together. I still, I'm not going to sit up here this morning and try to tell you uh, uh, that I have a full understanding how three separate beings can one be one separate, be one complete God, but have three completely different personalities, but always be in complete secrecy. My little finite mind cannot wrap around it. But let's not digress from one of uh, Brother Todd's famous sayings that I stole 20 years ago. I don't know how a brown cow eats green grass and makes white milk, but it does. And if I can't figure out how a brown cow eats green grass and makes white milk, then I'm not going to let the devil steal away because I don't understand completely how the Trinity works. Amen. Although I understand it enough to know they all in agreement, they all the same, and they all completely different, but they never contradict each other. Amen. All right? These things I've spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So, this is another verse that people quote, validating being led by the wrong spirit. The Holy Spirit's my teacher. Anybody ever heard that? The Bible didn't say that, because what's the very next part of that verse? And bring all things to your remembrance. So how's the Holy Spirit teach you? He brings the Word of God that you put in that lines up to your remembrance. And that's how He teaches you in your spirit. Do you know for years, I put in, I've told this story, I put in the Word of God and it was like eating dry crackers with no water. It was rough every day to get through my Bible reading. But as I got closer to God, the Holy Spirit would come in and when I needed that thing, He would bring that to my remembrance and I would have an aha moment because I put the Word of God in and He would click it along with what I was praying about. And He'd say, remember that verse you read over there, whatever, however long ago? He's like, it goes right here. And had it, I put it in, he pulled it up just like a movie projector, played it, and I said, ah. And he taught me and brought to remembrance the things I already did. He didn't give me a fresh revelation and pulled it out of nowhere. Big smile. Are you all seeing how this works? Yes. Whatever I've said unto you. So, do I, do you, do you, does it sound like pastor doesn't want you to be spirit led? No, I want you to be spirit led. Just make sure what spirit's guiding you and that it lines up with the word of God completely. Has anybody here ever got upset and you felt led to do something and you found one obscure scripture to back up how you felt? No. Can I tell you that was probably not the right spirit guiding you? Come on. Do you think you're the first person the devil ever used that trick on? No. <laughs> so don't be offended about it today. Just realize, you know what? I need to check the spirits. I need to check the Word of God and see what the Word of God has to say on this subject. Amen?
Next slide. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. So, the Spirit of our Father, which is also the Word of God, so if it doesn't line up with all those three things, then it's the wrong Spirit. Y'all still with me? Next slide. And the Word was made flesh. John 1.14 And the Word was made flesh. Who did He make flesh in? Jesus. Jesus. And dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and what? Truth. truth. The Spirit of truth. The Word of God. So Jesus was the Word. He is the Word. He, from the beginning of time, I don't know how He did it, man. I don't know. There's his ways are our ways. His thoughts are our thoughts. He's not even on the same timeline as us. A day with the Lord is a thousand years. But I know that He loves us. He has good things for us. He gave us a whole Bible to follow so that we can be... He says before His blessings and curses. He even gives you a choice whether or not your life wants to be painful or blessed. Now listen, I've been facing a lot of obstacles here lately. But you know what? Each one of the obstacles has had a blessing hidden in it. The only thing I have to do is keep my heart. <laughs> is that always easy to do? No. Or I could say, bless God. I, Lord, I followed you to the cornfields and this is what I got? <laughs> but here's the thing. I know I followed God to the cornfields. <laughs> And I'm doing what he wanted, not what I wanted. And I know that he's got me. Come on there. Do you hear the difference? Yes. So, we're validating what we're saying here. So, what spirit are you following? Do you think it might be a good idea not to just listen to every little thing? And I, I, I pray that gets you in your spirit when you're feeling led. Am I feeling LED by the Holy Spirit that lines up with the Word of God? Or am I feeling, e do I need to go grab a hold of LEAD? Because one's going to make you heavy and one's going to make you light. Next slide. This is worth tying this together once and for all that they're one and the same. One and the same. Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20, one of my favorite verses verses in the Bible. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So Jesus got all the power and he gave it to us. Does that sound like he led you left you down here powerless? No. No. Listen, he's waiting for you to say something to your mouth. He's waiting for you to speak to him. That's good news, right? Yes. There's a reason why the enemy wants to wear you down and keep you exhausted so you don't say nothing to your mouth. He don't even care sometimes if you believe. He just doesn't want, doesn't want you to speak. Y'all still here? Or, he'll even go one step further. He'll get you led to the wrong thing. Well, I don't know if I believe that, Pastor. I, don't, I, I think healing is past. I'm just suffering for Jesus. Do what? By His stripes you were healed. Past tense. At the cross. Well, I'm just feeling led that this is something God has for me. Uh, God wants to make you miserable. Okay. I don't see that in the Word of God. It doesn't line up. Because He said He would lead and guide you into all truth. The truth is, is that by His stripes you were healed. The truth is that Satan does come to steal, kill, and destroy. And your job is to resist him. Now, we, we, we have to resist some things, but you don't have to open the mailbox and cuddle with the stuff. Come on, are you hearing me? But how many times have you heard people, and sometimes it's just because people get tired, they get exhausted, that, that's why the enemy comes to wear down the saints, and then they say something stupid, and then they feel like, well, I'm just being led. And how many know you can always find somebody to agree with you on stupid stuff? Yeah. Especially when it doesn't line up with the Word of God. Well, I'm feeling led this way, Pastor, and so-and-so felt led with me. Well, that makes it better, huh? And your pastor said otherwise, and you just pretty much gave him a go to H E double hockey sticks look. I'm 
on a roll, Pastor Tammy, I want to get the truck started. <laughs> go ye therefore and teach all nations. How do you teach a nation? Do you just go up and go, I'm feeling led today that we're all going to go play in the cornfields. I mean, that's what his disciples were doing on Sunday, so why shouldn't we, right? It's in the Bible. They were running through the cornfields and the religious folk got upset about them because they were out there eating corn on a Sunday. So the disciples did it. I'm feeling led does do it. Let's all go run through the cornfields today and eat some corn. I'm feeling led that way. That's probably not even the dumbest thing that's been said that somebody said, but it's pretty dumb. But if you didn't know any better and I flowered it up and took out the sarcasm, you might fall for it. I don't know. But either way, it would not be from God, would it? But he said, forsake not the assembly yourselves together. You're supposed to be glorifying Him, lifting Him up. They were up there on Sunday morning reaching the loss. They'd already been to church. There's tons more on it. But we are to teach all nations using the Word of God, being led by the Spirit about the most effective places where to go. But how we do it's always the same, with the Word. Now, will the Holy Spirit make you look smart, smart and give you, and, and, and you, you know, there's sometimes, I'm going to be honest, that I've preached and preached throughout the years, different nations, different continents, and I'll go back, and there have been sometimes I'm like, man, I wish I had a recorder because the Holy Spirit broke that down better than I've ever realized. I want to go back and re listen to that. But He had to have something in me to pull out of, and it was all based on the Word of God. Y'all still with me? So baptizing in the name of what? The Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Three in one. So they're one and the same. One would never contradict the other one. Can we see that? So did the Bible say, just follow, you just be led by the Spirit, you'll be fine? No. Was that, mis was that, is that a misquote from the Bible? Was that a perversion? Yes, it is. Are we be, to be led by the Spirit of God? Yes. But the Spirit of God is also the Spirit of truth, which is also the Word of God, which is also Jesus, which is also the Father. And all three of them should line up together. You know what? There are a lot of times the Satan doesn't care if you're led by the Spirit. He's just trying to make sure it's one of his. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you all even to the end of the earth. So, how did Jesus command? How did he talk about it? It's written in the Word of God. That's what we're to be teaching people. Like right now, we're having some teaching time. It's kind of fun. Hopefully, you're enjoying it. Hopefully, I didn't crush anybody's grandmother feelings or nothing this morning. You know. But. We're going to be doing some of these because how many hear this stuff on a regular basis? We'll talk about somebody else other than you for a moment. How many hear, and, and, and I'm just going to say it how I feel about it this morning. You can do however you want with it. But how many people, how many people do you have say these dumb things to you on a regular basis? Now, are they going to let me minister to them if I... I call them dumb things because when I see it, I see it's attached to the enemy because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principality and spiritual wickedness in high places. So for me, it's just some dumb things the enemy's trying to attach to someone. So if I, if I said, well, if I, but if I go, man, I just some of them dumb things to somebody else, they're going to be offended. They're not going to hear anything I have to say to them that's going to help them hardly. Right? But if you know the truth, then what are you to do? Teach them. Someone goes, well, I'm not feeling led to go to that church. I'm not feeling led. Well, did God tell you? Well, no, but I just don't like it no more. Really? Huh. Show me that in the Bible. That sounds like a Hezekiah 6 9 to me. Do you see what I'm saying? Even more than that, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just picking stuff out of my head, but the thing I learned as pastors, the Holy Spirit's really smart. And whatever I pick out of my head to say right now, one of you are dealing with, and you're going to think I'm personally attacking you just because the Holy Spirit had me shoot it out off the top of my head. Right? Right. 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 Okay. 
Next slide. I think we got it. Yeah. John 17, 16 through 19. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. So we're to sanctify them. We're to bring them. We're to be led by the Spirit. And thy word is truth. So we started off talking about the Spirit of truth. And now we're seeing the Word of God is the truth. Can we see that? Are y'all bored yet? As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Sanctified means we're going to be cleaned up. Lack of a better phrase. Cleaned up and made fit for the Master's use. All the nasty junk don't hold on. How do we do that? Through the Word of God. And if you'll listen to the Spirit of God, I mean, it's good when... How many know the Holy Spirit convicts you? What does the Holy Spirit use to convict you? The Word of God. See how that works? 